Well, April is Autism Awareness Month. Autism is the fastest growing developmental disability in the world. It's a developmental condition that really can impact a person's social skills, communication, relationships, and self-regulation. We're joined by Dr. Laura Saunders from the Institute of Living. What are the three main causes of autism? Let's start there, Doc. How are you? Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. And yes, April's Autism Awareness Month. So I think it's really important to talk about this. Um, it's, um, I think, frequently misunderstood. Mm. And so the more we can talk about it, the better. So the, when we say causes, we don't necessarily mean direct causes, but the three things that we think have a, a pretty strong effect on rates of autism um, are environmental, biological, and genetic. So that's pretty that's pretty varied and pretty wide. Um, but we we, as you said in your intro, it is considered the fastest growing kind of neurodevelopmental disorder um, because we have a much better understanding of diagnosis and a much better understanding of the spectrum aspect of the disorder. Right. So let's talk about that because um, it's the spectrum, right? And people will say, oh, why didn't we have all this before? How come we didn't? We right. didn't it, it's changed. And there's a reason it's changed. And, and it's not just over diagnosing. We've kind of changed our understanding. We've learned more, right? Yeah. So, you know, 50 years ago, you know, we considered the rates of autism to be like one in 500. But that's because we were only considering those individuals who are at the really kind of low end with, with the greatest amount of deficits. Now we understand it as a spectrum disorder, right? We used to call those folks in the higher end of the spectrum Asperger's, which we don't really use anymore. So we understand it as a spectrum disorder. And there's deficits in three core areas, communication, behavior, and socialization. And you can have, you know, a range of deficits in each of those areas. Um, and so we, as uh, with a better understanding of it as a spectrum disorder, you can have deficits in some areas, but not all three areas. Is autism um, a treatable if you catch it early enough or n what's going on there? That's a great question. So early intervention is the best intervention, especially when there are more severe deficits around communication and socialization. Um, because we can teach some social skills. We can teach some um, ways to better communicate. So those things have some teachable skills. So the earlier we intervene, the better. Um, we've talked about this on Kara's Cures. I do think that um, having an understanding for what your deficits are and sometimes uh, having a diagnosis gives you a sense of, aha, this is what's going on with me. I am, in fact, different or neurodivergent and and this is what i can do to help myself well and i love that you brought up and i encourage people to go listen to the podcast because we got a lot of time to take a deep dive but people like elon musk have come forward and said that i uh have autism i, I was considered asperger's uh bill gates i mean I, it, elon musk said listen did you think i was a normal person i i make rockets and i send people to the moon i mean there's some great gifts in in uh, some strengths also Right. And if you if we go back to the Elon Musk example, if you if you ever listen to him, he talks in a monotone. He doesn't really make eye contact. Right. He has some of the core symptoms on the autism spectrum, but he happens to be brilliant. So that's why we really talk about this as a spectrum disorder and that there really is a range um, in terms of strengths and deficits. At what age is autism detectable? We can see um, those ch babies and children with the more severe deficits, we can really see it before age three um, because they they might have also sensory issues. They might have a lot of difficulty relating to people. Um, one of the things with infants that they use is um, ability to uh, respond to their name. Really, a nine-month-old baby should respond to their name because they've heard it so many times. Um, so if a baby's not responding to their name, if they're not, they don't make eye contact, they, they have some more repetitive behaviors, um, spinning and hand flapping and other kinds of repetitive mm. behaviors. Um, definitely talk to your pediatrician about your concerns. Yeah, and again, that birth to three, a lot of the services are free here in Connecticut and you want to get early intervention. Um, lastly, uh, it will end here as, to, as we're going to be running out of time, but you really want people to understand that um, it w there's no link, no evidence, no credible studies that show this is linked at all to vaccines. There's absolutely no evidence. There was a, a false study that came out years ago 
and it has done a tremendous amount of damage. There is no evidence linking vaccines to autism. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Dr. Laura Saunders. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. And you can listen to our full discussion on uh, Autism Awareness Month on the Caris Cures podcast. It's terrific. It's a great, it's an interesting topic. I learned a lot, you yeah. know, and, and even like um, with kids at school, you know, why, they'll, they'll, why are they always, you know, the emotional regulation can be a big problem for some of them. So the kids uh, in middle school and whatever, when they're overreacting maybe to stimuli, it helps kids to be more understanding. Sure. All mm -hmm. right.